So a very good morning for you. Okay. Thank you. My name is Pratik and I'm going to moderate this uh, session for you. So we are going to talk about your book, Riding Free, My Olympic Journey. And uh, the session name is My Journey to the Olympics on a Horse. So first of all, I'll uh, start by asking one of the simplest and one of the most uh, tough question for the, you know, for the people of the country is like most of the population of India is unaware of the term equestrian itself. Okay. So please uh, share some helpful insights on the term equestrian for a clear understanding to the audience. So basically, uh, firstly, thank you so much for having me on this platform. Um, I was looking forward to it. Um, it's always uh, good to talk about uh, something I'm passionate about, which is horses. So to come to your question, what is equestrian? Equestrian is a sport that involves a horse. Now, there are many types of uh, equestrian has many disciplines. So you can do show jumping, you can do dressage, there's eventing, that's what I did, or there's driving, bolting. So there are about seven disciplines that come under the equestrian flag. The Olympic Games has only three. Uh, which is so it's all sport which involves a horse it comes under this uh, comes under equestrian okay so that is pretty great actually being a sports enthusiast i also wanted to have a thorough knowledge about it because um, when i read for your book and i had an overview of it so i was pretty impressed with the kind of uh, you know reviews and kind of uh, thoughts people have shared who have actually known about the sport in a deep way have been really passionate about it and seeing Absolutely. your passion was really unbelievable. So that is why I personally also wanted to ask about this question. So, okay, moving ahead, you know, to the second question I'll ask, please share your insight on the developing sporting culture of the country. Of equestrian or of sports? Uh, sporting culture in India is actually developing. So I'd like to have an insight from you that what do you think about this? I like to have no, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, sport has really grown uh, immensely. I think uh, 20 years ago, sport was, uh, you know, going down in the playground and playing uh, with your friends. And that was considered a sport, you know, uh, yes. school used to have a small play, uh, afternoon uh, after lunch. They had about a half an hour session where kids went around and ran around around the play field that was considered sport but that has changed so i think it's going in the in the in the right direction you're getting more professional uh, in all aspects of it and it's not only about the sport but about the training about the nutrition people are traveling overseas coaches are coming in so um, i think it's going in the right direction but we've got a, far, a long way to go a long way to go okay yeah that's that's actually uh, my sense of asking the question was pretty fine because um, in 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 the country like india on the name of sports visit, we most of the students, most of the youths actually just know about uh, cricket. So, right. and you belong to a sport that is, uh, you know, it is, uh, Not like people are unaware about it. People are really yeah. unaware about it. Yeah. So, uh, the book you have written, Writing Free, and I know that uh, what are the challenges you actually faced while writing this book? Well, there were not really any challenges as well because this was so close to my heart. So it was really my passion that I really took out. So I, I have to be honest, I didn't really have, it was not a challenge for me. For me, the challenge was that I'm not, uh, you know, it was, uh, uh, my mind thinks much faster than I write. So for me, yes. it was actually chronologically putting it was more important, you know, so that there's people for, for the reader to understand how it goes from one stage to the next stage. Yes. The second thing was to remember everything, you know, this all happened about 20, 30 years ago. So you have to remember, or even for, I've written right from the age when I was five or six years old, because it was a dream of mine to represent India. But as I always say in my interviews before as well, it's the horses that bring out the memories. So once I remember my horses, I remember the stories that were related to my horses. And that's how the book got, uh, you know, told. Um, yeah, I, I, while I was having an overview of your journey throughout, so I just went to Wikipedia and then I had like, you know, I had to know because the passion that, um, you know, India is following is quite, uh, it's quite like, it may, it keeps you going, it thrives you. So right. the passion for the country, uh, you know, to represent on, uh, in the Olympic is, it, it is inspirational. <laughs> so, okay. So moving ahead, I'll ask you like, um, you know, you have constantly mentioned in your books about the terms like dreams, self-belief, teamwork, and preservance. So how have these words drive you through the glory of your success? So this is the uh, foundation, you know, whenever you look for something, I always tell kids today or, or people I, uh, who I train is you have to dream. 
you have to have a dream first for a dream to come true, right? But if you kill it at the at that stage itself, we, you got nowhere to go. And don't look at things like money or time because you're never going to have enough money or enough time. And dreaming doesn't cost anything. So I always tell people they've got to dream big. You know, ever since I was a kid, I would have these vivid, vivid dreams about me already winning medals, giving victory speeches, how I'm going to talk to the press, how I'm going to thank the, my parents. Anybody that came into my life, I would write a note, you know, m- mention their name so that I don't forget it. Yet. When I win a medal or when I represent India, I will. So it was always right from I was six and seven years old. Uh, the second thing that you talked about is perseverance. You know, yes. it, 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 it appears to everybody in life. You know, it doesn't only matter to sport, but anything we do, we cannot give up. You've got to keep pursuing your goal. And I always tell people, the one thing I can assure you, whenever you put your goal out, something like this, you are going to fail. That I, Success I cannot guarantee, but failure I can guarantee. But that's, that's okay. It's about overcoming them. It's about finding out, okay, fine, there's a wall. Now, how do we climb it? Either we can you know, jump up and jump down or we can take help from somebody or we can ask for assistance. And it's amazing the amount of people that come together to actually help you when you need it. If your goal is so pure and so, uh, so sincere, you know, they see the hard work in you. Uh, and that's, that's, that's really important. That's great. That's great, actually. <laughs> you, know, you actually don't have to look for the money in the sport you're following with passion. So I, I understand that. So, okay, so moving ahead... Uh, you know, you're coming to you very personally. How tough has been the struggle to get into the Olympics from a country that hardly knows about the sport you are playing? Now, that is very hard. That is a hard one. That's where the whole book is. I mean, it was not easy at all, you know, because firstly, the qualifying for uh, our sport is you have to be based overseas. Luckily, I went to boarding school at a very young age. So I learned discipline. I learned to be live on my own. I learned to be away from my family. So that helped a little bit because it's not easy. It's a very lonely path, you know, when you start choosing something like this that you want to represent India at the Olympic Games in any discipline, even if it's not even in any individual sport, you know, when you're in a team sport, at least you're with the team. But any individual sport, I look at it for even like, say, someone for weightlifting or boxing or fencing or shooting. It's all individual sports. So you have to do this all by yourself. You know, it's not easy. And I was the only one. There was no other person. So that was one of my biggest difficulties was to leave country, go and base myself in a, in a foreign country, not knowing anybody, uh, you know, figuring out who the people are, how to, you know, train with the right people, uh, you know, because you get all kinds of people in this world. So, you have to, so that was one big uh, big struggle. Uh, the second struggle was also that nobody had done it. So, you know, for me to actually qualify to a two star, then three star, go up the levels, you know, it was a learning curve for, for me and my horse. I didn't have that kind of funding that I was buying a ready-made horse. I was on a horse that also was learning with me. So we were yeah. both learning together, you know. So, so that was a big challenge, I think. Okay. So what about your personal support system? Like, um, although you were not getting any support from uh, outside, but from your inside, like from the family side, from the friends. Oh, side. fantastic. Fantastic. I mean, it was just unbelievable. Right from my start, you know, I mean, right from the start, I had amazing, amazing people that uh, that was there. Uh, it was it was huge. I mean, parents was always, always supportive. I had amazing friends. Like in college, I would be back and forth from, you know, competing in Delhi, competing in Calcutta, competing in, in Bareilly, Meerut, wherever it was. But my friends would be having my back at college, you know, with my with, with uh, uh, papers or, you know, assignments. So those friends came in there. And then when I actually went international also, I had so many people that came into my life to help me. Uh, you know, it's whoever may say that, you know, I, I, I did this. It's, it's not I. It's, it's a huge army behind us. It's like, as, you, as they say, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. It takes more than a village to take one person to the Olympics. And that's what I want to really, the book was about to tell people that, you know, we need to support as many people as we can because, you know, it takes a, a whole army. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like when I compare the time when you were glorifying our country, I mean, you know, the sports system, you know, the students, the, the, the people who were actually passionate about sports had very few backs to rely upon. So when you're having that support system, it becomes actually a bit motivational and inspirational at the same time. Right. So, yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, so moving ahead with my next question. The way sporting culture is growing in India and also when youths have started taking self-interest into other sports apart from uh, cricket, do you see the paradigm of equestrian also changing in the country? Absolutely. It has already changed. You know, I mean, 20 years ago, I was the only uh, civilian, right? It was an army dominated sport. Today, uh, you know, just now, like the junior nationals were being held in in Bombay, in Mumbai, and there were over 100, 150 entries. So huge numbers in each category, you know, 100 100 in each category from children's, uh, sub-juniors, juniors. 
academias. So it is all growing uh, and smaller, uh, uh, you know, there are places like now there's a, there are extremely good riding schools in Bangalore, in Pune, in, in uh, Pondicherry, in Calcutta. Yeah. So they're all growing, you know, Jaipur, uh, all of these, uh, the small, the two tier cities, the three tier cities, because they have the land. So the sport has grown uh, drastically, drastically. Yeah, so and the knowledge around, for the sport. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so moving around the country, you know, representing our nation, what brought you all the way to Nargol, Gujarat for opening a training <laughs> center? I mean, that is well, quite you know, at the same time. Yes, it is a beautiful, beautiful, it's a small fishing village. And it's actually my parents had a home here. So we already had a base. So that was one big uh, advantage. But, you know, when you look at it, the facility is lovely because it's a beautiful beach. It's untouched. We have seven miles of beach and the water the sea so it's great therapy for the horses and that's what my whole uh, is to have that holistic approach when you're training riders you're not in the city there's no rush there's no hustle there's no bustle there's no time it's all put onto the horses and your training so there's nothing has to be rushed <coughs> because this uh, because we have to go somewhere uh, so I, I absolutely love being here and it's just wonderful wonderful place to uh, to train horses and train riders and we have riders from all over India coming long time uh, long stay as well you know two months to a year they come and stay with uh, in Argo. Yeah. Okay. So throughout your life, throughout your book, and throughout the interview, whatever we had, you have had mentioned horses. So my next question is completely based on the horses. That how important is it for anyone to share a connection with the animal when you are associated to such a sport that depends upon both the human and the animal relationship? Everything. I'm so glad you asked this question. And this is what my biggest thing with even the kids today is that they don't spend enough time with their horses. You know, it's a part of your life. It's a part of you. You have to compete together. It's not yes. you. It's not him. It's not you. It's not her. It's both together. You'll have to work together. You'll have to know each other inside out. And the only way you can do it is by spending time with them. You know, so even I give you an example, like when you go to a competition and a horse takes a long time to eat his feed, you might get nervous, but he, that may be his norm. He may usually take that long because you've not been with him. So you need to know how long he takes to eat, how long, what he eats, what he likes, what he doesn't like, how the temperatures, how he does, how his recovery rates are. You need to know so many technical things uh, until you spend time with them and fresh, have that bond with them. Uh, you know, even in our goal, once the whole day is over, we're running, running, running with horses and training and looking after and management. After dinner, I love to walk through those tables and it's just me and my horses. And I get to know each one personally, you know? So I just yeah. stand in front of those tables and you watch them, you see their mannerisms, you see what they're doing. You can also, you know, put your hand around them to see whether there's any heat, any inflammation, any cuts, hurts. But it's your, it's your quiet time with those horses. So it's a very, very important to have that bond with each horse and each horse is different. Yeah, exactly. So we can say that your me time, you know, it turns into yeah. our time with the horses you have. Absolutely, absolutely. It's also kind of a meditation kind of thing when you are spending time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, that's great. Okay. So actually, you know, what brought me to this question was while I was going through the review of the books, I got to see that, you know, lots of animal representatives around the country have hailed you for the thing that you are, you know, that the bond you are holding with your animals, with your horses is quite incredible. So I thought that audiences might be interested and uh, they yeah. also uh, they also will get an insight and knowledge, also the moral that we should, uh, you know, uh, you look after the beings that are not humans as well. So, right, right. Okay. Yeah, that's just, what the sport is about. That's why the sport is so different from every other sport because when you play cricket or football or badminton or tennis, once the game is over, you put your racket in your kit bag and it's done. Well, exactly. with horses, it's not. So after the event, you still have to look after the horse, you have to feed the horse, it's you have to you have to bathe the horse. So it builds character, it builds. So whether you win or lose has no meaning. Within minutes, you've already forgotten because you still have to look after your horse. You can't say, well, I had a bad day, so I'm, I'm just going to go back home. No, you still got to go back to the stable, bandage the horse. Look so it teaches children also that it's not all about them. It, they have to learn that it's about the animal as well. You know, it's about giving back, looking after, it's about others. It's beautiful, beautiful sport. The, that's actually very fantastic. It, it, you know, it actually it teaches you also, you know, the acceptance, the kindness, the humbleness you yes. have to carry as yes. a human. Right. That is that is quite great. That's quite great. Okay. So moving ahead. Okay. So this is uh, going to be a very uh, a kind of question. I don't know whether you have thought about it or not. But any sport other than uh, the cricket have very rare icons. Okay, like Sanya Mirza is to lawn tennis, Sunil Chetri is to football, Pankaj Advani is to snooker. Do you eye yourself somewhere near to that field in the, you know, in equestrian, in the horse equestrian? 
Do you see yourself somewhere there? You know, I don't really look at. I don't look at that as I, I'm not. I don't believe in that. You know, I believe in to each his own. Uh, you got to do what you have to do. And the idea is to spread the word of what sport is, what it is to represent your country, and what is to be uh, somebody you want to be. Rather than I also don't even look at it that way. That I'm I'm for the sport. I think it's to to uh, inspire. That's the reason I wrote this book is to tell all kids that yeah, the book is a bit about the horses and about my equestrian journey. But it actually should be read by any of the young all youngsters to tell them that they. Can live, to live their dream, not to do it because you know it's convenient, because it's easy, because the carpool is going, so they do it, or because their friends are doing it, or because it's the cool thing to do. No, no, no. These things are, don't last. They've got to do it because they really want to do it, and that's what's really important, you know. So that is what I keep telling all these people that this is what the book is: that get out of your comfort zone. That is the most important thing in life. You know, exactly. when you get up in the morning, you should get up in the morning with with a desire to do something. You know, be somebody. What? Uh, perfect yes, please please continue sir so, so my main thing is for telling kids that you know they have to get out of their comfort zone it's not about doing the same thing because their friends are doing it or because their parents are telling peer pressure or you know things like that that is not the reason why uh, because it's short lived so that's the reason I wrote the book as well. It's not only for a question. It is my journey and it has a question story, but it's about for, for younger generation to really read the book because it's a very easy read. Even eighth standard can read it and parents can read it to tell them that all parents' job is to just support parents to live their dreams, fulfill their passion so that they will be successful in life because it's something they want to do. They're not doing it because they're too, you know, for the wrong reasons. You know, it's anything in life, you yeah, you have to get out of your comfort zone, push yourself, Take it to the next level. You know, that's what life is all about. That's why we get up in the morning, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I'll I'll clearly contradict on the uh, on the question I've asked you here before in the session that uh, how do you see kids who, you know, these days in the digital era, they're quite um, affected by the gadgets, by the modern day, you know, the yes, technology. Yes, 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 yes. So do you have a kind of thing that how are these, uh, you know, these kids going to get out there in the field, play the sport they love, apart from the gadgets, you know, they're highly addicted. Absolutely. I, I agree totally. I mean, that's why my school, you know, we're living in this small town, the Wi-Fi is not very good. So there's not much time that they can be on their phones at all. You know, and we have no electronic games at all. We don't, I don't even have a TV in the house. So yeah. uh, it's very, uh, you know, we don't even have a TV in the house. So our thing is all about hands-on, be outdoors. And yes, you have to have that balance in today's society. You know, you cannot tell the kids no electronics at all. But as long as you keep them occupied, keep yeah. their passion, they will not have time for that. So that is the support group, which I was talking about, where the parents have to come in, you know. You cannot expect everything from the kids as well. If that's, you know, it's easy for the parents. But if you get wake up in the morning, exercise, you know, go to class, they have less time because they need to, they also, they get tired, they want to rest. But if they're getting up at 11 o'clock, it's not acceptable, you know. So for yeah, me, it's about the routine. I think life, they have to have a discipline. There has to be a discipline in order to achieve anything in life. You look at the top successful people in the world. It doesn't matter what, what they're doing. The reason they're successful is because they have the mindset to be successful. You know, they're not exactly. successful because they're just out of the blind. Talent is only to a certain point, I always believe. But if you don't have hard work, talent has no value. Exactly. You can be really talented, but without hard work, what is talent, right? You still have to wake up and prove your, show your talent. Exactly. In fact, uh, you, what I believe is that while you go out in the field, while you go out, you know, outdoors to play games, that actually brings you closest to nature also. Because Absolutely. Nature, yeah, 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 yeah. You inhale fresh air. And, sport, yeah. and yeah. sportsmanship and, you know, you're out with an animal and uh, it's just wonderful. You know, they, 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 uh, the kids that I have out here, I mean, it's just lovely. You see kids from all walks of life, from different incomes, but their horse kids are lovely. They just love their animals, you know, so they spend maximum time brushing them, grooming them, bathing them, riding them and, and spending time with their horses. So that takes up more time. They cannot have them be on their phone when they're with a the horse. So it's just, I, I absolutely love it. While I was on your Instagram profile, I was quite, uh, you know, awestruck to see that you have promoted your kids, the, you know, the, the people who are actually training there. You have actually yes. brushed them on the social media. That was great. That, that was really, uh, you know, awestruck for me um, from my <laughs> point of view. Uh, okay. So uh, how do you see equestrian in India? Like it was, a high, uh, as you mentioned before, that uh, it is it is still a highly army dominant game. So, so do you see this transmitting in the general public as well? 
No, it has. It has. It has already started going into the uh, now. The teams are all civilians. There are not many army or all. There's not all army at all. You know, uh, the federation is with the army, but otherwise they are running it with all civilians, with civilian yes. clubs, civilian area. So it's going to take a little bit more time, but I think eventually it will spread out to smaller, the smaller tier cities and be. You know, what another beauty about our sport is the only sport where men and women compete at par, and the reason yeah. that is because there's no strength involved. So you know that's what I think Indians should do well in it because we don't have that kind of build and strength that the, that the West that the West have. So sports like uh, that's why we do well in sports like shooting and things like that because there's no strength. You know, cricket also is not really a strength sport. It's technique. It's tactics. Yeah, that's why exactly. we are you know we're good cricketers. So you know in other sports where there's speed and where there's uh, muscle and strength, we have a long way to go in those sort of sports. Not saying that we don't, but we have a longer way. So that's why I feel a question fits in that gap between that. You know. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, you're moving ahead. Uh, as I told you that I actually went through the training center you're running in Nagoya. Okay. Okay. So, so what is the sole purpose or the mission of the equestrian training center you're running out there? So my main goal and main thing is to really help these the younger generation and riders that want to go international. So I want to be their base because I've been there. I've lived overseas for over 20, 30 years now is to prepare them for their step to go overseas because they all have to go overseas. I don't want to hold them back. My job is to for them to get ready, prepare them and then send them overseas, use my contacts, use my connections and let them go to Australia, to America, to England, wherever to, to, to good trainers, good uh, stables and and carry on their careers. So exactly. I am, want to be that intermediate in between to really give them that foundation because, you know, in India, it's all about strata of society, you know, of who you know and where you know, while overseas, it's on what you know. So exactly. the more they know, the better jobs they're going to get, yeah. the better experiences they're going to get, the better horses they're going to get. So that is what I really want this place to be, is to help kids to actually go overseas and become international riders. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Uh, you know, the mission you are holding is quite, uh, quite objective, and uh, I, I, I really wish you all the best for the objective you have set for yourself. So, yeah, I also wanted to ask, sir, that um, what do you think? How much does it cost? You know, the the costing a sports can handle negotiates parents from obstructing their kids to enter a sport. Like right. you are into equestrian, you know, it is quite. Uh, it's not cheap. It's not cheap. Yes. You cannot just go out there and practice. So, yeah, your insights on that. So, definitely, I have, I'm not going to, you know, say that it's a, it's, a, it's a cheap sport. But I also believe that I don't think money should stop them. If the boy really wants to, there are lots and lots of opportunities out there. There are, there are people out there who will help. There are lots of stables. Like, even in my stable, I have students out here who are not from a financial background, who don't have the money, who do not even do not pay for lessons. But I can see it in their work ethic. I can see it in the way they love their horses. I can see it in their riding. So, that passion, I can see that. So, I'm willing to do, you know. And there are lots of yeah. people that will do. But then those sort of people have to show that. I had a parent, the other, a child the other day saying that, you know, how do I convince my parents to allow me to do this? And I, yeah. and I gave them one example. I said, what are you doing to prove to them that you're worthy of it? You know, okay. so it's, it works both ways. You know, I you get up in the morning, be on time, make sure they're the training sessions. Then your parents can see, okay, fine, this child is totally fine. But if you're sleeping in, resting, you know, missing a class and then saying, well, you know, my, my parents are not taking me. That's why I'm not going then you will remain where you are. But if your parents are not taking you, get a cycle, go on a bike, walk down, ask a friend for a lift. You know, if you're creative, there are ways to do it. You look at Meera Bai, I mean, you're a perfect example who won the first medal for India at yeah. the Olympic Games. I mean, she was in one village, the training center was in another village. She didn't even have a way to go, right? But she wanted it so bad, she used to hitchhike with the trucks. So if there's a will, there's a way. You don't have to look at it that way. Yes, and then you need some sort of money, but it will all comes in place upon, it all shows with, that's my whole message about this book as well, is to tell people, just do it. Get out there, get out of the comfort zone and other things will happen. You know, the universe does provide in some way. Exactly. I, I hope the youths actually watching this session are taking out all the positives out of it because yeah. it is really insightful to listen it all from the man who has done, who was <laughs> doing, it alone at the time, no, nobody was aware about sport in India. That's actually very really great. So uh, you have been a sports person, you have been an enthusiast, you have been passionate about the thing you do, you have been passionate about the animals. But still, while you were writing the book, you're not a writer, but a writer does face, you know, some mental block. As you said that, you know, your mind works faster than you write. 
so yeah. how how tough or like you know i won't say tough but how challenging was it to put your feelings put your you know you you put your experiences in the exact words you wanted to so i was very fortunate i had, I had my wife uh, who actually uh, helped me in this as well so for me i would uh, you know just express my passion coming out straight from me and then she would help me formalize it so that was really good so we worked as a team you know because that was much easier because otherwise you would not be able to read the book you would like what the hell is happening this book this fellow is you know he's going for jumping from one page to the other page to the other page you know because I, when i was on a chapter i was so excited while writing it you know so for me i would jot down my, my points Uh, and 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 write as to the way it was actually, and then she would say, "Well, now this doesn't work with this," and putting it back in chronological and putting it all together. So it was it was a good teamwork that we did together. There was a quite a good you know mixed tag team match for putting out the book yes, for the yes, for yes. the youth of the country yes. and the world. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's pretty fine. So uh, you know, yeah, the whole idea was we didn't want to make it complex. We didn't want to think of yeah. big big you know how to put it in a better way of phrase. It was supposed to be simple. It's supposed to be easy. The whole idea, even with Harper Collin, we really uh were really worked together in re- reducing the. the price to make it real or dream that's it you know follow your passion don't go by what the norm is get out yeah. of that comfort zone and do it yeah actually publishers role also role you know when you are writing such books uh it, i think you are lagging on your network this time oh okay. about- i'm good now all right yeah yeah you're yes, okay. yes. yeah i think that you know the publisher sides also matter a lot when you're writing such a book right. you know and being such a such a sports person uh, It, it it becomes a job of the publisher also to publish it in a way that you know people love it yeah. so um, yeah i'd like to conclude this session mr okay. andreas it was it was really fun it was really insightful to talk to you and i'm really privileged because i was looking to this book very closely i wanted to have a personal chit chat with you to know about you more and uh, while i was going through the internet I had to do the thorough research because uh, it was not just uh, for the sake of doing research, but uh, you are quite you, your your journey has been quite interesting, quite inspirational. So I was also looking up to it as a you know from the aspiration point of view. So I hope the the youths watching this live session you know uh, will take all the positives out of it. And apart from that, the sports you know the horse equestry and the love for animals and the things will grow in our country. you know the 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 nation is actually developing in the sporting culture so i think that you know uh, it will also grow up so yes. thank uh, you so much for having so, uh, having so, me on this platform uh, you know yeah, before binding this up i'd like to ask you that uh, are you you know you're visualizing something you know the commercial coming in the way of equestrian like you know other sports have got uh, you know the commercialization like football isl is there for the table tennis you know ittf uh, has organized a commercial uh, platform for the table tennis players in india lawn tennis has got one so are you eyeing something in the equestrian field as well No, I don't think right now commercial is what my my goal is. My goal is still we are still way far behind that. You know, mm. I want to spread education first. I think that's the most important education about the sport, education about the horse, and then help these riders understand that because there are lots of young riders in this country who are lovely riders. You know, they can ride a horse, but they don't know A to Z about the actual animal. And that's what I want to learn because until you really know your horse, know your animal, know about the technicality of your sport, because there's so much to learn because you have to. be absolutely together at the at the top level so that is my goal right now for the next 5 years i would say is based on absolutely pure education then mm-hmm. we can go into try and get commercialization getting into you know uh leagues or competitions and things like that to grow it into and 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 go international okay okay that's that's actually great thank you thank you for spending your time at pragati which are literally the festival and we are really pleased to have you on stage so thank you uh, so much for having me i really appreciate it it's a lovely book i hope people go out and get it uh, they you know, will sir they uh, will <laughs> <laughs> exactly 